You can make your planner be a game changer in your life. I better turn my monitor off. Okay, you guys, I got baby down for a nap, so I'm gonna do a video for you. Today I'm gonna talk about how to use your planners. So how are you going to use your planners consistently every day? Maybe you have one planner, maybe you have multiple sections, but how are you gonna use that and make it consistent every day? Okay, so we don't wanna fall off the wagon with this, right? We wanna make sure that we spent that money and we spent that time, we have spent the time decorating, we wanna make sure it's not a wasted time or way of spending our money. You can make your planner be a game changer in your life. Okay, so you're here because you wanna figure out how to make either plan li planner life simple or how to not get overwhelmed or how to use your planner consistently and make sure you're getting the most and the best use out of your planner. So tip number one for me is to make a planner for your planners or now don't go away. I t <laughs> you might just have a piece of paper but you want to have a checklist of the planners that you need to visit. You want to have a checklist of the sections that you need to visit, whatever it is, however your planner is set up. If you just have one spread that you visit throughout the day or even the week, then you also want to have some kind of checklist of what you are doing with that planner. So for example, something that I have found the most useful in using my happy planner, because I do have so many different sections, is having a, an undated planner. I use the dashboard planner. Having the undated planner where I can just list out the different sections I wanna visit, and that is my guide for the day, okay? That is my section that I see that doesn't overwhelm me because it has a list of like five things, and it has, the sections of the planners I need to visit. Now, I do use that planner as my catch-all planner. So if you are familiar with the dashboard layout, on the left side, you have different sections of things that you can keep track of. So for example, I think they say like, maybe tasks or to do, um, they might have a section for calls and emails. And a lot of times I customize that, I'll use stickers to cover them up and make them how sections that I need them for. Sometimes I will use them the way they are because they're honestly great the way they are. But in the daily portion is where I actually keep a list of the planners I need to visit. This is also the section where I will keep reminders for myself throughout the of what I need throughout the week. I will keep like a nice quote. I will keep our dinner plans. I will keep a running to-do list for the week. It's just a, a set a, a planner system um, layout that works for me for this, but you can use any planner layout or just even a piece of paper to write down the different sections that you want to visit. My second tip is that when you visit that section, make sure you check it off in this little in this little space or planner. So I like to use the X system. So if I put one line from the X, then that means I have visited it once. And usually I have to visit that planner section again. So I will put the second X when I'm completely done with visiting that section. I do have to visit them multiple times a day. So usually the first time that I visit it, I'll put the X and then at the end of the day or when I'm completely done with that section, I will put the second line to make the full X. So that is a visual symbol to myself that I do not need to visit that planner and I have finished it for the day. My third tip is to have your planner in order of basically just works for you. What works for me is to have my planner in order of how I visit it throughout the day or how often I visit it throughout the day. So my first section is my catch-all planner. It has the list of the planners I need to visit. My second section is the one that I do next in the day or the most in the day. So if I'm visiting my home section the most throughout the day, that's my second section. You can order it any way you want to and you can take time to figure this out. I did, January and February are completely in different orders but I'm excited that February is now in an order that will work better for me. And who knows, March may be in a different order as well. My fourth tip is to basically take a little bit of time, whether it's days or a week, to get ready for the next month and set it up a little bit ahead of time. If you're setting your planner up each week, take some time 
I like to use Fridays just because I don't know if I'm going to get there on Saturday and Sunday, but on Fridays is when I start to prep the next week's planner. So for example, with my catch-all planner, what I will do is on Friday, I will have it in my system or my to-do list to start setting up my planners for the next week or the next month. And what I will do is I will go to the next page and start listing out the things that I need to get done. I like to make space for the things I need to get done and then decorate it unless I know that I don't need a lot of space for writing, but I write a lot. So I make sure that I write what I need to first and then decorate. And the more and more I do that, if I can decorate beforehand, that's great. I just don't like to take up the space with the stickers if I need that space to actually be productive. My fifth tip is to set aside time in the beginning of the day and at the end of the day to go through your planner. I'm not saying you have to go through it page by page. If you have a thick planner, I can't go through mine page by page, although I would love to have it set up so I can go through it page by page, but I just can't do that just yet. But I do make sure that I go through the list of planners that I visited, make sure that I finished them out. If I didn't, I will end up writing down the things that I need to do the next day to catch me up. I also use a different color other than my usual black friction pin. So that way I can check off the things that I did get done, circle the things that I didn't, so that way I know that I can I need to go back to that item. Because for example, I have a lot of things that I put on today's do list to do list that I didn't get done. So I circle it so I know tomorrow that I need to see and get to that item. If I have more than two or three days go by where I have circled items, then I know that that next day or in the morning when I'm visiting my planner, that I know that I got to get that stuff done. And if I find that I have that happening often, I do need to reevaluate my system. And I would suggest that for you as well. My sixth tip is to make it easily accessible or easy to carry around. If you are visiting this channel because you are a busy mom like myself, then you may even have an office space. But I have a little bit of a tiny nook in my living room here that I have an office space for. But I also have times where I can't be down here getting stuff done and I need to be upstairs doing my stuff. So my planner is kind of like my little mom office. It's my space. It's my mom space, my productive space. So I have this little pouch you're gonna see kind of a mess of my plan right now but I have this little pouch here that zips on the side holds some things on the front it doesn't hold too much I don't want it too bulky but if I need to throw my phone in there if I need to throw um, some pins in there if I need to put some stickers in there and um, a couple papers that I need to use to call people or pay some bills then I have it there and I can grab my planner and go so if you want to be able to get the most out of your planner and use it, have the things that you need to use with it easily accessible. If you can't just pick up things and go, have it in a place in your house where you can quickly go to. I struggled with this for a long time and I don't want to ramble on for you, but I do a lot of stuff in my kitchen. That's where I see things. My kitchen becomes a clutter space. We're not even going to go into that, but I have found that at in a section of my kitchen, I stopped making myself feel bad for it because that's where I go. That's where I'm at. That's basically another office space for me. So I set a little area up where I can set my planner and easily access it and um, just basically get things done with it. I also um, can take my planner upstairs with me in the morning in, at nighttime and bring it back down in the morning and I'm not juggling too much in my hands. So that is a huge thing for me. It may not be for you, but if it is for you, I recommend getting a little pouch or something like that that would fit things that you need to carry around with you a lot of times. And my final tip, number seven, is to make it yours. Make it a place you want to visit. Make it a place that you enjoy being in. And this might take some time, so try not to... Um, get overwhelmed or let yourself, um, I don't know, as you are going through your planner, don't, don't let it become a place you don't want to be. So give it some time, give it a chance. If you need some motivation, let me know in the comments below or contact me through my Instagram, which is also in the description below. 
and I will try to motivate you and keep you going because this space being making it a place that I want to be I actually want to visit it I'm not going to visit my planner or those sections if it is not a place that is kind of reflects my personality reflects how I'm feeling at that time in my life and I'm not saying that you need to decorate it make it like a memory book which you totally can do all these things but it takes time to get there and I think if you make it more of a place that you want to be that you will find that you will be visiting it way more often my wellness section if you've been following me on Instagram or have seen some of my past videos my wellness section is honestly one of the best places for me to be and I was worried about this section because I didn't want it to end up being an unused section but it is now the most used section and I'm so excited about it I'm excited to visit it multiple times a day but I started with at least once and when I visited it once, I wanted to do it again and go there again because it has helped me in so many ways and I I don't even decorate it that much. So make it a place that you find useful. So what I would start off with maybe putting a couple stickers if you're really into decorating, but just making sure you know how you want to use it with um, actually writing in it. And then after you figure out how you want to write in it, and all the things that you want to keep in it, then you can kind of start customizing and adding stickers. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. I also hope that you will hit the like button and that you will come back for more. And in order to do that, you have to subscribe for me. And if you want to know the next video I'm posting and when it, when it posts, I am sticking to a Tuesday, Thursday schedule. Sometimes I end up getting to put one out on the weekend, but Tuesday, Thursdays are seeming to be most consistent for me. But you can hit that notification bell if you want to be reminded that I've posted a video. Thank you guys for all the support. And I just hope that I can um, continue to make good videos that help you guys, mamas out there, and help you just to enjoy your life more and make it a little more simple, hopefully. All right, you guys, have a great day. See you for the next one.